France 1, Belgium 0. And Le Bleu are through to the quarterfinal of Euro 2024. That game was a tough watch, guys. I'm not even going to lie that the game was just a very difficult watch. Um, a few surprises when the game started. I didn't know where the width is going to come from for France. They started Kante, Chouameni, and Rabiot. That three, and then up front, uh, Turam and Griezmann and Mbappe. And the three in midfield just looked like they were going to be a bit more, um, a bit wider, and the front three were looking a bit compact. I looked at the squad and I was like, I don't understand where the width is going to come from. But to be fair to Deschamps, um, what he did very well is that he let he actually told Mbappe just go to the wing. And this is one of those games where Mbappe had to sacrifice. At this point, they don't have much pace up front. You need a focal point in Turam, but you need pace as well. So Mbappe was put on the wing quite a lot in this game. Griezmann also finding himself on the wing a lot, but maybe after 10, 15 minutes, he started coming a bit more inwards and Kunde was providing the width on that side. For someone who was a centre-back, Kunde is proving to be such, such a baller. And I say this during the live. I feel like in, uh, from, a, from an offensive perspective, as an Arsenal fan, this is a selfish thought, as an Arsenal fan, Ben White, this, th this is the natural progression of Ben White. He needs to get to that level of Kunde at right back. Like, if you saw Kunde for the first time today, you'd not even think he's, if you're a football fan, you'd not even think he's... Um, like he was he was a center back you know so yeah like the boy has done very well to the boy has done very well to just really slot into that right back position and make it his own you actually can't bench him at this point upamecano at times was quite um he was okay but there was the one moment where he was shaky there was the one turn that openda pulled on him Belgium, oh, Belgium, the one surprise was Openda. Openda started in place of Trossard. And even as the game wore on, Trossard didn't even come onto the field. That was a bit of a surprise. But I just believe that they, were, they, they, they are much more dynamic with Openda playing in terms of they have pace, right? Trossard does a lot of things, but he doesn't have pace. Trossard is very good on the space around him. But this Belgian team, team, <laughs> this Belgian team just doesn't have pace, you know? Like it's, it's yes, they have Doku. But who else would you say like is like is a PC winger or even the fullbacks don't attack that much? Theat doesn't give you that much uh, pace from the wing. Um, Castagna doesn't attack that much. Carrasco kind of does, but sometimes it just looks like he's just running, bro. It's just weird, man. Like Onana, Carrasco, De Bruyne in midfield, I don't know. They just looked... I, I, I can't explain it. I really can't explain it. But to be fair, they matched up with France toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They created very good chances... When France looked like they had the ball and they were going to pressure and really put them under consistent pressure over a period of time, Belgium always found a way out. One thing I feel like they did very well was Doku, in the first few minutes, like the first 20 minutes of the game, Doku was attack. He was getting the ball in very deep areas. By deep, I mean um, he was way closer to the halfway line than the opposition D, right? And one change they made is they let Onana loose. They told Onana, okay, when you get the ball in midfield, start carrying. Because France are getting quite wide and they're leaving our spaces in the middle. Again, France is doing that knowing that this team doesn't have great ball carriers for midfield. They don't have the leg, like, someone like Chuomini to carry the ball over distances in midfield. Or Mbappe, if you ever got the ball in midfield. Or even Turam with the space. But at the same time, um, if you let Doku... If you give Doku space on the wing, he's going to beat anyone one on one. So they can gang up to on him on the wings and kind of leave spaces in the middle. So Onana was now there. That was the counter. Onana now was carrying the ball through midfield. The one time, the first time he actually did that, he ended up getting the ball to Doku in a very dangerous position, which led to a free kick that um, led to the chance. That was the... Whose chance was it? I think it was KDB. And then Mainyo saved. Um... So there was a sequence there, right? I'll just get back to that sequence shortly. So yeah, Doku was now getting the ball a bit higher. That was the one change they made. There was a lot of adjustments that were being made infield in this game. Um, looking at where... Uh, the, and the key people to look at were Mbappe and Griezmann for France and Doku and Onana for Belgium. And obviously KDB, right? Um, because KDB just... Wherever he goes is where things are going to happen. So... Both coaches actually pulled. One would do something, another one does something. One would do something, another would do something. I would. I loved how Kunde was getting forward, as I mentioned earlier. They, you thought that it was going to be a very rigid front five of Mbappe completely on the wing, and then um, oh, Mbappe is another one because he'd be on the wing, then he'd come to the left half space. Griezmann would go to the wing, come to the right half space, but Mbappe would do it a bit more often. Even the second half started like this, he was hugging the touchline again. 
I wouldn't want Mbappe to be the person hugging the touch lane. I want him closer to goal. But they also have people who can create threats in the middle. Griezmann is a really, really good threat in, to, um, through the middle. So it was it was it was it was a hard watch for the casual fan but from a tactical perspective like i i thought it was it was fascinating just to see how they're going to move and how uh, momentum kept on swinging one way or another as they say in all sports uh, sports is just about momentum no one can dominate a 90 minute game for 90 minutes no one can dominate a 60 minute basketball game for 60 minutes but what you can do is you get moments in the game or 48 basketball game in the whole 48 and 48 that's basketball not 60 what am I saying? Hey. Um, but you can get moments in which you you sway momentum to your to your advantage, right? And and you can also take away momentum from the other team. And that happened a lot in this game. And that happens through coaching. It happens through making tactical changes. It happens through individual brilliance as well, you know. Um, um, yeah, so I need to go back to that chance there. So Manio saved. It was the free kick that Doku conceded. Uh, well, Doku was fouled and then France conceded. The ball was whipped in. Mino saves it. Uh, or Mike Mignon, as Samiro would say. And it leads to uh, a Rabio. Actually, yeah, the Rabio yellow card. And Rabio got suspe- I mean got the yellow card. Now he misses the next match. He'll be suspended for that game. And um uh, who else? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, obviously the first half ended nil-nil and France were, um, thanks to um, thanks to the tactical nature of the game, France were just left to taking shots from outside the box. Chouamini had a few shots from outside the box. Turam had one header kind of went wide. He also had a second header in the second half, also went wide. He He's the only person who had good chances, um, but that's how the first half ended. Then obviously going into the second half, um, um, another Chouamini shot had <laughs> deflected Steve. And this was all created from Mbappe going wide, as I said earlier. Him going wide really stretches out the Belgian defense. And um, there was one big moment where Saliba lost the ball in the middle of the park. And then it goes to, um, I can't remember who was attacking. I think it was Castagna. But Teo Hernandez does so well to like track back and then come from the, from the, the wrong side and actually put in a really good tackle without conceding a penalty. So... That was a really, really big moment in the game, I feel. Um, after that, obviously, Lukaku also had a really good shot, but it was blocked by uh, Upamecano, I want to say, or Jules Kunde. Um, yeah. Who had come on? Yeah, Bakayoko had come on. And he's the one. So there was a bit of great play on the left side. Bakayoko gave them a lot of energy on that left side and someone who can drive the ball forward. I guess that was the game plan. If it stays tight, they bring in Bakayoko, someone who can hold the, who can bring up play and stuff. Then, if you go one nil up, bring in Trossard, someone who can help you just keep possession of the ball um, and just kill off time, right? Um, then, obviously, Kolomwani uh, came on. I can't remember exactly when he came on. Let me just check that. So Kolomwani came on, and he was um, in the sixty-second minute for Marcus Turam, who. I believe he was okay. He wasn't that bad. He wasn't that great. He was just there. Um, and in the 85th minute, he gets a shot on the right side. Again, just great play on the right side. France knew if there was a going to be a breakthrough, there was going to be any one of their athletes. It was going to be the likes of Turam, Kolomwani, Mbappe. And that's exactly where it came from, manipulating space. He gets onto the ball. He has a clear shot on goal. Vertonghen is trying to come and block, but he's just there a bit late, deflects the shot, and ball goes into the back of the net to make it 1-0 in the 83rd minute. They try and make changes. They bring in Luke Bacchio for, Ka- for Carrasco and De Ketele for Castagna, but yeah, it was a bit too late. Three minutes, only three minutes were added in this game. Again, it's very weird after coming from the Premier League, seeing like loads of time being added, and then you're just getting three minutes here. But yeah, game is over. Belgium are out, France are through, and we move on to the next game. Portugal taking on Slovenia. We are going to be live. Anyway, by the time you watch this, it will be over. But yeah, we're going live for that game.